Eu sou Camila Lajolo, assessora técnica científica da coordenação do Proqualis, que é o Centro Colaborador para a Qualidade do Cuidado e Segurança do Paciente, e hoje eu converso com o professor Eric Ronagel. O professor Ronagel é psicólogo, um especialista reconhecido internacionalmente nas áreas de engenharia de resiliência, análise da confiabilidade humana, engenharia de sistemas cognitivos e sistemas homem-máquina inteligentes. Ele é autor de centenas de publicações e em seus estudos ele sugere que o cuidado de saúde é resiliente e que essa compreensão é importante para a segurança do paciente. Professor Holnagel, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. It's a great pleasure to interview you again after four years. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's mm -hmm. nice to be back in Brazil again. It's, it's an honor. So to get us started, I would like to talk about your trajectory. How did your research trajectory how did your research trajectory lead you to patient safety? Well, I think there are there are two uh, parts of that. One is the, the research, the type of work I'm interested in, the type of problems I'm interested in, and then there's the domain that I work in and, and why it came to patient safety is very practical. I uh, happened to to move back to Denmark and I got a position with, within the healthcare sector and therefore it naturally became the, the main focus of my work, but, but uh, the What's more interesting for me, I think, is that the uh, the approach itself, the problems that we look at, the solutions that we look at, represent the uh, rather long trajectory, uh, which started with safety and then in, in about 10, 15 years ago, started to move into resilience engineering. And then that has been applied to different areas to Healthcare now to uh, aviation to process industries to traffic and to other areas. Okay, it's it's very interesting. Um, could you talk a bit about the concepts of safety one and safety two? What they are? What are the differences? Yes, uh, the, the safety one and safety two was uh, a uh, way of talking about what we're doing that we developed in. About 2012, I think is 11, 12 is the first time we started to use the terms, and and it basically reflects what was said also in resilient engineering from the start, because in the first book on resilient engineering, it was clearly stated that failures are the flip side of successes, or or, or successes are the flip side of failures, basically trying to emphasize that the reasons why things happen uh, are the same more or less regardless of the outcome so and that is what safety one and safety two tries to to underline by saying that we tend to look at things that go wrong for obvious reasons which which we may come into later and to focus on them and explain why things go wrong and in doing so we neglect uh, the fact that most things actually go well and we don't pay attention to why they go well and safety two is a way of saying we need to look at what goes well and understand what goes well so l l let, let me challenge you a little bit the concept of safety <coughs> two is very interesting to focus and understand on what goes well that things go more often well than than go wrong But if we think about the manager who's responsible for safety at, let's say, a hospital and who is um, concerned about measuring incidents and feels a certain reassurance about counting incidents, what would be your advice for this professional and his beginning in, in, in his understanding of safety too? Well, as you say, it, 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 we, feel, we feel assured if we can count something and if we no and that seems to be sort of a human trait that we like to to uh, feel that we are in control of what happens very often by counting what happens but one way of putting it is to say that safety one defines safety as being without something without accidents and incidents and so on 
where safety two defines safety as being with something, namely with the things that go well, with the things that succeed. And if you put it in that way, you might as well count the number of things that go well as count the number of things that don't go well. Uh, you, you will feel just as reassured. And, and it's, it's, it's interesting that if you go to other interests than safety, if you go to quality, if you go to productivity, if you go to customer satisfaction or patient satisfaction and so on, there you try to count the number of things that go well. Uh, it's only when you on safety you, you, you count the things that don't go well. So I think the, and that's also one way of expressing safety one and safety two. Safety one defines safety as being without something. And therefore we try to make sure that we don't have these things that we would like to be without. Where safety two try to find safety as being with something, and therefore we should try to make sure we can be with the things that we would like to be with. And what we'd like to be with are things that go well, successful outcomes, patients that leave the hospital uh, in, in, and are healthy again, and, and uh, work that goes well in general. That, that's very interesting. But thinking again of that manager responsible for safety at the front line, can I say that the approach that safety one brings and the approach that safety two brings are complementary? He should be looking at both or he should you stop? Should, you should be looking at both. Safety two includes safety one. Okay. Safety one looks at the things that go wrong. And, and uh, depending on which field you're in, it could be... Uh, one out of a uh, hundred, one out of a thousand, mm -hmm. <coughs> one out of ten thousand, one out of a million. And safety one looks at what goes, goes wrong, but not at what goes right. Uh, safety two would look at everything, things that go wrong and things, things that go right. It'll look at everything that happens, uh, but look at it in the same way and trying to understand why it happens. Uh, I, I think the the reason why safety and patient safety has been focused so much on failures and accidents and errors is that they naturally attract our attention. When something happens, we notice it, particularly if we it happens to ourselves and we are hurt or harmed in any way. We notice it. It's, it's a natural response. When something doesn't happen, as we say, when something goes well, People often say, well, nothing happens. Uh, but something happens, we just don't notice it because it goes well all the time and we habituate to it, we get used to it. That is also a natural psychological mechanism. And, and, and it's a survival mechanism because we cannot pay attention to everything. So things that happen all the time, we stop paying attention to. But in safety, we should realize that this is actually not a very good idea. We should try to pay attention to them. Interesting. That's so. Th that's fascinating. These concepts of safety two and safety one. But let's talk now a little bit about resilience. Sure. What's your definition of resilience in healthcare? Well, you could say that the definition of resilience is uh, uh, that things go well. Um, there is some, or has been some, argument about what resilience really is and whether there is something that you could call resilience and my view at the moment anyway is that I don't think there's anything that you can call resilience but there's something you can call resilient performance mm -hmm. so to me resilience is a quality or characteristic of certain types of performance of certain types of way, ways that a system behaves uh, but there's no single quality called resilience that you can go in and measure or, 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 or manipulate or engineer. So, and then of course the question is, well, what are these qualities of, of behavior that or performance that we call resilient? And basically the short version is a system, an organization is resilient if it's able to do what it's supposed to do both under expected and unexpected conditions. So, um, in this characteristic, in, in resilience being a characteristic of a system, of how it performs, uh -huh, it performs do yes. you think there's something particular about resilience in healthcare, how healthcare performs when compared to other industries? Uh, 
No, I don't think so. And I think, and that, that, that's, I, I think that's why the resilience healthcare view or the resilience uh, perspective is interesting because you can see that what enables an organization or an individual for that matter to behave in a way that is resilient is basically the same regardless of what domain or what field we are talking about and what we have found so far in resilience engineering is that there are four uh, qualities or four potentials that, that are important. You, you must, to be resilient, you must have the potential to respond when something happens, which mm -hmm. is quite obvious. And if you can't respond, you, you go out of business, basically, or you die. You must have the potential to monitor what's going on, so you are, can become ready to respond, you can improve your response. You must have the potential to learn, because if you don't learn, then you will always respond in the same way. And of course, you can't do that unless the environment is perfectly stable, which no environment is. And finally, you must have the potential to anticipate, to look ahead beyond the current situation and see what could possibly happen in the future so you can prepare for that. And if you have these four potentials as a healthcare system, as a hospital, as a ward, as a clinic, or as an airline, or as a, as a car manufacturer, or as a business, then your performance can be resilient. It, has, it doesn't guarantee that it will be, but it can be. And what's the potential impact of a, perfor of a resilient performance in healthcare? Well, it is that you are able, able to, to accomplish your mission to, to do what you should do, even if the conditions are not as anticipated. And it's, it's important to say in resilience engineering, it's not just to avoid harm or risk or dangers, uh, which is what safety focuses on to, to, uh, to avoid dangers and to be free of harm and risk. That is important, but it's also important to be able to use opportunities. In, in your daily work, in the way a hospital runs, there may be opportunities for doing something. And if you can't use an opportunity, then you're not resilient. You may be safe, but you won't be resilient. So it's looking at what goes well and trying to make it even better that's important for resilience. That's, that's fascinating. And how could I develop the resilient behaviors? How could an organization develop those resilient behaviors that you've mentioned? Well, what, what we're working on now, actually, with, with the healthcare uh, people in, in a number of countries, in, in Canada, in Australia, in, in England, in Norway, and Holland, and Denmark, is to use this idea of the four potentials. And we use that to, to assess how well a system an organization does with respect to these four potentials. And based on this assessment, we can then formulate uh, or come up with ideas about how can you improve your quality. For instance, if, if it turns out that your, the time it takes to react when something happens is unsatisfactory, it's too long, then you can look at that and say, how can we improve that? So it's not just saying, how, how, do, we how do we become more resilient, but how can we improve the, the speed of response? How can we assure that we are able to respond as long as the situation lasts? No, and one thing is to start a response. Another thing is to be able to continue it as long as necessary, and this is where, where, where systems very often fail. They sort of they start and then they run out of gas, so to speak, in, uh, halfway through. And we, we can we can use these questions. We call them these. Uh, we can develop diagnostic questions for each potential. We can look at the organization. We can use the answers from the diagnostic questions to to specify ways in which we can improve the potentials, the sub potentials. And in that way, we can develop the, the resilience of the organization. Interesting. So my, my final question for you is, how do you see the future of this area? Ah, how do I see mm -hmm. the future of this area? I, I see it as well, personally as very exciting because, uh, uh, because there is a, uh, 
a, a already now a large interest and a, and a growing interest, and I take this interview, for instance, as an, ex, as an expression of this interest more widely. I think there's a lot of opportunity. I think there's a lot of uh, many people that realize the value of beginning to looking at how things go well, because by doing that you understand what you're doing and you can actually improve what you're doing very much. So I, I think there's a there's, there's a bright future for it. I don't think it's 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 a final answer to anything, but it what we try to use it is as a practical approach to address the problems, the issues that people face in their daily work, not only issues, classical issues of safety, that things go wrong, but also issues of how do we, how can we improve our performance. Okay. And I said it was the last question, but I, had, I have uh. one more. <laughs> so what are the challenges that you foresee as well? I think the challenges are to get it more institutionalized. We have, have a very good experience from people who are directly invo involved in the clinical work. Mm -hmm. And they see the value of this immediately and, 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 and want to use it and, and, and learn how to use it. We do talk to people that are sort of high up in the hierarchy and administrators, but, but they have other concerns than just the everyday work. They have other responsibilities, and, and for them it's, this may sound interesting, uh, but still they have to fit it into a larger pattern. We are also, uh, in some occasions, talking to people who are regulators, uh, because it's very important to get them on board too, and, and they they do find it interesting, but again, they have many other things they have to to attend to and be responsible for, and it's difficult to get it all to, to hang together. So I think that's another challenge, actually, to, to integrate it better into the many things that happen in an organization and to get away from looking at safety as an isolated problem, because safety is not an isolated problem, it's part of how the system performs. And, and this can hopefully help to improve the general performance of a hospital or an organization. Thank you very much. It's Thank been you. A pleasure. My pleasure too. Uh, and uh, we, we now we call them safety one and safety two. Sure. Safety one is the time the, is the understanding of safety which is we traditionally have, which, which we have used for many many years, and, and the understanding which we find in, in definitions of safety from formal organizations and, and from guideline documents. This basically says the system is safe.